My name is Mary Getui. I am married to Samson Getui. I'm the mother of three, uh, the late Harun Mumbai, uh, Stan Getui, and uh, Kerubo Getui. We have also been blessed with two amazing grandchildren, Harun Mumbai Getui. We say the small one, because uh, we also remember there was the late, and also Amani Getui. I work at the Catholic University of Eastern Africa. I was at Kenyatta University for a while, and I've also served in various other capacities. One of the notable ones being as chair of the National AIDS Control Council for about six years in the recent past. Uh, as chair of the National AIDS Control Council, it was an eye-opener to me on the reality of HIV and AIDS. Of course, each one of us has experience, experienced it in, its, in our own ways, but um, HIV remains a concern and a challenge, and even today. Uh, we probably are not giving the situation as much emphasis as was done. For example, in 1999, uh, when HIV was declared a national disaster, but the challenge still remains and uh, a lot of appreciation to those that have continued to serve in various ways, hoping that uh, a time will ha come when we'll, have, uh, we'll come to zero. Zero new infections, zero deaths, and zero discrimination. You know, life, life is uh, many things. It can be going very smoothly, and uh, then suddenly, bang, something happens in your life. Um, it was the year 2014, in July, July 20, when uh, this dreaded phone call came that there has been an accident involving our firstborn, Mumbai, others call him Harun. Uh, the, there has been an accident and from the tone of the caller, who was my son, Abuki, I knew that things were not right. So I made another, we, I was far away. I was with Samson, my husband. We were traveling. Uh, we were really far away from home. And we hadn't even reached our destination. And this phone call was mommy. Mumbai has had an accident and you need just to go back home. Don't proceed with the journey. And uh, fortunately, there was a, an aircraft on the runway coming back to Kenya. When, when this phone call came that there has been an accident, I, I, I felt there's this sixth sense that it's over. And um, I didn't want to call my son. The, the one who had called, because you also dread hearing it from him. So I called a friend, and uh, who actually said, yes, this has happened. It's a friend doctor. And I said, uh, doctor, doctor, you are the people who treat. Is there nothing you can do for him? And he said, unfortunately, no, we have lost. So, and I got this before we even got into the plane to come back. Actually, immediately, uh, when this phone call came, then I made this other call and it was uh, confirmed. So by the time we are returning home, we already have this information. And uh, I must say it is one of those long, long journeys. So we were able to be assisted to get uh, back home and getting to the airport, uh, it was the reality because we had friends, we had family, uh, some had traveled 400 kilometers uh, to receive us at the airport and to proceed to the morgue to confirm that this had actually happened. 
And one of the things that I've learned is when people are in such a situation, probably we don't need to say very much, but just to show that we care, uh, that there is a concern. And uh, okay, probably it's because I was on government assignment, my husband was with me, but even when we landed at the airport here in Nairobi, I was with colleagues from the National AIDS Control Council and uh, one of them actually ought to have continued with the journey, but said, uh, Mary, you can't go back when this has happened. You can't go back alone. We are all going back together. To me, that was amazing. You know, usually when you land, you have to look for your luggage, you have to do this, you have to do that. We had to do none of those. And uh, I, I just want to hope that, uh, you know, you can't say there'll be no more death. This has to happen. All of us have got to go. When it has happened to somebody, it's important that there will be people there for them. Yeah. When you get such news, it is very devastating. And at the beginning, you want to think that it's a dream. You really want to think that it's a dream because uh, like any parent, you have high hopes for your child. Uh, Mbaye was 31 at the prime of his life, active. I think Mbaye had energy probably of 10 people. So you don't expect that such a thing can, can happen. So it's very devastating. And when you get into this uh, mock, and it's a lifeless body that is lying there. Yeah, Mbaye was, um, was born a healthy child. And uh, <laughs> every morning when he woke up, uh, you know, those days we used to have some wooden cots. You didn't need to know that the baby has woken up with a cry or anything, Mbaye would wake up and shake his bed really hard. It's like, are you people aware it's a new day and we have so much to do? He was full of life. He went to school and um, enjoyed his uh, school academic, yes, but a lot more in the um, what as a teacher, as a, as a teacher, I could call co-curricular activities. He played, uh, as he grew older, he played rugby, he played uh, guitar, he was a member of various clubs, the Presidential Award Club. He did very many uh, things. And uh, I also want to appreciate the role that the church played in his life. We are members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Uh, children you choose, and I would also say the children uh, choose or are encouraged to go through the adventurers and pathfinders clubs. And Umbaye went through this. And uh, he's, uh, uh, we always baked at home, but the pathfinder club uh, took this even a notch higher because they would be asked, what do you want to do? And uh, Mbaye did quite a bit of uh, baking, and it really boosted him and motivated him. And I believe this is what led to his um, uh, starting his own bakery, Simply Delightful Creations, which he always did from home. He did cakes, he did pastries from home. Uh, but he got his own premises, which ran for let's say about a month, and then the accident. Um, it leaves you with a lot of uh, questions. Did he need to start the bakery and go? But we are grateful that as I speak today, the bakery's the doors remain open. We are not sure how much longer that will be, but uh, almost seven years now, uh, six and a half years, those doors remain open. Three amazing young men have kept those, day, those doors uh, open. And once in a while, when the work is a lot, other hands come to, to help. 
So that is why he, he exerted himself. And I want to thank God that uh, uh, this journey I'm talking about, uh, we started off on a Thursday, but on Wednesday, I spent an afternoon with him. It nearly didn't happen. It is an, a plan we had for almost two weeks. Uh, but that mid-morning, I nearly cancelled because there was so much to do and I'm traveling the following day. And then something, when he called and said, Mama, do we still have our appointment? I nearly said no. I said there's so much to do. Then something uh, like a whisper, where are your priorities? Is it work or is it family? And I'm so glad that I managed to do what I could so that we could spend that time uh, together. Um, uh, on by his accident, he was a motorbike accident, he was a rider, and uh, we spent this afternoon together, and when he got on the motorbike, he said, Mom, I'm ready to go. Those, those words remain very, very strong. I didn't know how deep those words were until the accident, and then I said, ah, I'm ready to to go. It meant this long, long journey. Uh, we are proud of him. We, are, we, we really are proud of uh, Umbai. He went to study in the UK and chose to go to a very small, uh, a very small city, Lampeter, as part of the University of, it was part of the University of Wales. Uh, we visited him there twice. Uh, it was a, basically a white uh, environment. What amazed us is him making a call one day and saying, uh, parents, Wazazi, I'm standing for an election. And said, Umbai, we, we are not a political uh, family. And said, well, you may say that, but even you... Um, at that time, I had just been elected as Dean of the School of Humanities and Social Sciences at Kenyatta University. He said, isn't that politics? I said, okay. We said, if you are ready, that's fine. And amazingly, he got to be elected as the president of the Students' Union. They hadn't had, uh, I'm not being racist, but they hadn't had a black or international student being president in the universities 182 years. So he broke this record and they re-elected him again. Uh, as any parent, you are, pro you, you are happy about that. And uh, how Mbaye got to endear himself to the student body was, um, he wasn't afraid of work. And the school administration also appreciated that. Uh, one incident in particular, he had just reported there, it was a first year, and he saw on the notice board um, students being invited to uh, sign in for some work. Renovation had gone on uh, in a building, new furniture had been bought, and the, the, the school needed this furniture taken to the new building. I'm not sure how many floors up. Uh, Umbaje signed, and there was nobody else. Um, so he turned up the time they were sup supposed to do this work, and uh, the person in charge, uh, who turned out to be a very good friend to him and to us as family, and told him that, okay, you are the only one, so you can't do it. And he said, but I've looked at the amount of work, I think I can try. And he carried these things up the stairs with a song, a loud song. He didn't sing to himself. He said, people, I just carried these things whistling like any African boy could do, singing my own songs. And in a short time, I'd done most of it, except those that were too heavy. Um, uh, to cut it short, the Anne had in, intended that since there were 
it was actually Harun Umbai who had signed for this uh, work, she could get a company to do it. Uh, there's a boy, I think a Chinese boy, who also turned up but did just a little and said, no, it's a little bit too much. So Umbai ended up being paid as a company because he did the work more or less. What he could, he did. And uh, Anne was very happy, so she could get him to do this and to do that. And um, he was always very friendly. I think that's one of the factors that also motivated others. Um, until now, six and a half years down the line, but you will find a petrol station attendant or maybe a security officer someplace, um, the people who sell newspapers and magazines, and they'll ask you, Atujana Kijana, what happened to him? I mean, Alirud Ngambo, did he go back to, away from the country? Because he endeared himself to them. And sometimes he would get, greet people so passionately and you would ask him, and who is that? He says, I don't know. Then why did you greet them like that? He says, but people need to be warmed up, people need to be appreciated. Uh, one of the boys he left in the, in the, in the bakery, and I believe he could, not mind him, he could not mind me sharing this, was that he, he knew Mbaya as a friend, but he didn't know Mbaya's name. He said, how does that happen? Mbaya used to go to his establishment where he was working, and they would chat, chat, chat. So they became friends without knowing each other's names. And when Umbaye started his bakery, he told this young man that uh, I'm looking for uh, people to run my establishment. And this boy says, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm volunteering, I want to come. I said, but you already have a job. He says, yes, I have a job, but you know you are my friend. And if you are looking for people to work for you, I'm ready to come. And that is when they got to introduce themselves and to get to know each other's uh, names. Of course, when we landed at the airport, our daughter was there, our son was still far away, and uh, it wasn't easy. But, but again, there were people, and when there are people, then the burden becomes lighter. As he lay there, he had like a smile on his face, typical of him. And all I remember thinking about is, uh, you lived well, you lived short. That one is also not so, so short. You, 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 you lived well, the kind of child you are happy about, a child who was also good to the uh, siblings, a, a, a child who, when his brother was getting married, his younger brother, when Buki was getting married uh, far away in uh, on Australia, he said, you know, that is a little boy and I need to be there to help him plan. Of course, we as um, Africans, we had always said, oh my, you should be the one to go. You should be the first one to go. And he said, you know, there are issues in life, such as marriage, where there is no traffic jam. So when it's your turn, you, 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 you go. Um, I, I want to say the people who t were there, many of them, yes, they were there because of us as Mbaye's parents, but many of them were there because of who Mbaye was. I think uh, grief is, is very deep and grief is uh, very unfortunate and the people deal with it differently. The, and there are days when you think that, I mean, you, you kind of rationalize and say, what can I do? It has happened. You have all these very good memories, but there are days which are very tough. And I, 
I remember one day I go to work and uh, I just felt very low. I felt very low, so low that you cannot even share it with somebody. And uh, an urge came that just go to the accident scene. I'm talking about several months, maybe a year down the line. And I took myself to this accident scene and I spent a little time there. I can't even say what I went to do because it's really futile, it's, it's almost useless. But there is some kind of connection. I went through my motions there, then I came back to work. And somebody said, you know, Mary, we haven't forgotten what happened to you. And uh, when we see you around and we, we get encouraged. And this is the day when I'm really finished, when I'm torn, when I've, had, I've even had to go to the accident scene. But to my colleague, and I really appreciate He's seeing me as strong. I think this is just God's grace. Uh, if the outside is showing that it is uh, strong, the inside is actually very broken. I, I go to a support group of mothers who have uh, lost their children. I was introduced to this group by a very dear friend who was helping us um, when the accident happened. Um, as I said, Umbaye had many friends. One of his friends, very influential friend, uh, at the, the day of the burial says, but what can we do to keep remembering Umbaye? Can we start a foundation? As family, we had been thinking of something small, really small that we could be doing ourselves. Uh, but when this was mentioned at the, the day of the burial, um, there was a lot of uh, support and a lot of interest, and it needed to go the legal way. We start the foundation and have it done the legal way. And we were introduced to somebody who could help us, a lawyer who could help us do this. And unfortunately, while she was helping us, her own son had an accident. And uh, when it happened to her, the person she looked for was me. She said, Mary, you have gone through this recently. How does one handle it? I, 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 I don't know whether I, I was of help, but I was there for her. And we walked together, and then a month later, she called me and said, Mary, I've heard of a support group, can we go? So we've been members of this uh, support group. It's very uh, loose, it is not registered, we do not have a calendar, we do not meet in, um, in an institution, we go to each other's homes. The first meeting I went to, where we went with my friend, they told us that in the meeting, there are three things they serve in plenty. One of them is serviettes for tears, tea, of course we are Kenyans, and prayer. And these three things have kept that group together. And fortunately, new members come because these deaths keep on um, happening. So getting a support group is important. Getting to walk with someone who has walked the same path, it will not change anything, but the, you are vulnerable to each other. Those tears that I've talked about, you, 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 you cry freely, you talk about this freely, and I think the talking is also part of the, part of the healing. Um, one thing I keep encouraging is uh, maybe this period of COVID, things are a little different, but 
when we've gone through all the motions of the barrio, many times we, a grieving family or a grieving individual, people who are bereaved, are on their own. Uh, that is a difficult time. We may not see them physically. Again, I want to appreciate uh, those people who have ensured that every day they send a text. It could be a verse or it could just be saying hello. At least you know that somebody is uh, thinking about you. Uh, those who are able, physical presence. But there are also times when the grieving person just wants to be on their, on their own. Even before my, my, my son, our son, I lost very, very close people, very, very close people, uh, family or uh, friends. Since then, this has continued. It's good just to seek God's wisdom, God's leading as to what to say or what to do. I remember I, I was young and going for a, a funeral service in one of our big churches in Nairobi, and the preacher standing there and saying, uh, family, I really don't know what to tell you. Close friends of this person who is lying here, I don't know what to tell you. Then he gave an example, uh, he said this may not happen in Africa, but he gave an example of somewhere in the Western world where there was a death and many people came and did many things and said many things, but there was this man who came, said nothing from his mouth, but went to the piano and played, played, played for a very long time, quietly, and the moment came, he just left. And for one of the family members, that was the most memorable and most comforting thing. So we may, we may not know, but just being there, I think, is, is, is important. And uh, it may look rude, but you could even sometimes ask somebody, uh, what would you like us to do together? What would you like me to do for you? Uh, which day would you like me to come? How long would you like me to, to stay? I think then you are not imposing. Because uh, again, what may apply today, like I would like somebody to come, we go out and uh, just walk or uh, share a drink. Tomorrow I may not feel the, the same. Um, so it is not easy, but that's why I said it requires uh, the Lord's leading and God's uh, wisdom for somebody to know what is the right thing to do or what, what is it to say. And uh, it's, it's good to make the best of the time that we, we have. Again, like for me as a mother, the way I relate with each child is, uh, is, is different. So it's good to, even for friends, it's good just to create that time for, for each other and to make the best use of it because we do not know. Again, I'll go back to what I said earlier, that uh, I'm so glad that I spent this Wednesday afternoon with, with Umbai. It was short, but really quality time. Uh, work and other commitments could have made me say, no, uh, let's make it another, another time it could have been too late. And uh, uh, my mother was sick for a long time. And any time I went home and I was leaving, she would say, uh, well, I'm not sure whether the next time you come, it will be for the funeral. 
Is there anything that you would like us to... Is there any unfinished business? And I would tell her, Mama, don't talk like that. But she'd say it's the reality. You never know, probably I would have been the, the one to go and uh, note, note, note her. But let's just make the best use of time and of opportunity with each other. Uh, because we know what uh, our people, our friends, our family, what they appreciate, what they like, as much as possible, let's give it to, to, to them. I do not know, but uh, there's so much around us that tells us that it can happen any, any time. It's not age. It's not age. It's not even uh, uh, COVID. In the midst of COVID, there are still accidents. There, there is so, so, so much. Uh, do what you want to do for somebody when you, when you have them. Yes, I think with the technology now, there are, uh, there, there are groups. Just like we have um, uh, groups of different interests, there are groups. And I also want to appreciate the counselors who come handy. Some of them do it uh, voluntarily, some of them do it as uh, as uh, what could we say as a job but uh, and even our our pastors or they even individuals who are not any of those that I've mentioned that have a gift of just being there and when I say just being there uh, for some people it's just their presence which brings about some aura of uh, serenity, of comfort. Um, if you are such an individual, then step out and, uh, and, and assist. And I also like to encourage that um, anyone who goes through bereavement, seek help, seek help. Find somebody you can confide in. Um, they, 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 they will not change the situation. The, the death has occurred, yes. But even uh, maybe you have questions, maybe you just feel very low, get somebody or get a group where you can share. And uh, again, we are all very different. Uh, some will want to talk it out, others will not. And their way of coping is not to talk um, about it. But a professional can gauge you and recommend probably which direction you, you, you should go. Uh, and not just uh, death, but any issues that we are going through, I think it's good to find ventilation. ventilation. I know a friend who writes poems to express themselves, to get it out. So that kind of person may not need people because they have their own way of uh, dealing, dealing with it. But uh, just understand yourself, understand your situation, and uh, seek appropriate assistance. I, I want to appreciate the idea of the foundation in honor of Mumbai. Um, it was initiated by one of his friends, a very influential uh, friend. And uh, we've had a lot of support. Uh, one of the events that we have been having every year, except in 2020 because of uh, COVID, was the public, is the public lecture, where we have different themes on entrepreneurship, uh, youth leadership, road safety, uh, very well attended. At the, our venue has been the Catholic University of Eastern Africa. We have continued to use the auditorium. Um, that has been very helpful. Uh, last year, we got several calls. When is the public lecture? The accident was on 20th of July, 
2014. And so we always have an activity, uh, this public lecture around that time. Uh, that has been very good and it has helped people in their own, their own way. Now, uh, one of the activities that we have also been doing is on uh, road safety. Red Cross has trained uh, the, the, the bikers and the bikers have been very, very supportive. The bikers have got their own um, association. Mbayo was a member, they have worked with us. Their patron has been one of the speakers. Uh, so we, we, we are very grateful about that. We, as a foundation, we also try to live uh, some of Mbayo's aspirations. He always said, and sometimes we need to take what people say seriously, he would say, I'll not have my own children, but I'll make other people's children very happy. I'll have a van, a van of fun. And we have tried every December to have a van of fun. We just bring um, some children together and they have uh, uh, fun. We send vans to bring children so that they can have uh, uh, fun. And these things, we have not done it them us as family. There are many people who have worked with us. I wouldn't want to mention names lest I forget some very key people, but anyone who has worked with us, we just want to say thank you and may God bless you. And I also want to extend um, a, a word of sympathy to any mother who has gone through what I have gone through, and any parent, any sibling, and if I mention that, then it's all of us basically who have such had such an, uh, an experience. Uh, but death continues to be uh, part of us, but it should not finish us. We can still raise our heads and um, just do what we can to prepare for it. It's not easy, uh, but sometimes I say, who knows, I may not come back to this house tomorrow, I mean today. Uh, let's know that it is uh, with us. It doesn't have an age factor, it doesn't have a circumstance factor. Uh, so let us just be prepared. And for, I know people have got different and various uh, belief systems. But for the Christian, we know that this is not the end. I remember um, a pastor coming to our house and saying that life is chapters. So even when there is death, there's yet another chapter to be written. And let's look forward to this other chapter. Thank you.